Psalm 77, chapter 5th verse. I've considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. The oldest synagogue in the world, Dera Europus. Visual art from ancient Judea does not help us determine the clothing of the Jewish priest. Where there are many statues, frescoes, reliefs, and other artistic works showing Greeks and Romans, there are precious few works of art likely to show Judeans. And when they do, the representations are of biblical figures, such as in the Dera Europis Synagogue images of the third century Christian era. Harper's Bible Dictionary. When we looked under the definition for the word architecture, the oldest synagogue in the world has been brought from Dera Europis on the Euphrates to the Damascus Museum. It had originally been a house and was remodeled for a synagogue AD 200. This was succeeded by another built on top of it, AD 245 to 256. The walls carry unique frescoes glorifying the Aaronic priesthood and showing Old Testament incidents as well as the Jerusalem temple in spite of Old Hebrew antipathy. To likeness. Now, we're going to take a deeper dive to research into the Dera Europa Synagogue. Now, we're going to go into some more reference material. So, let's take a look at Collins Atlas of the Bible. The development of the synagogue. The Greek term synagogue simply means assembly, but the word has long been accorded by Jews a more specific meaning. The synagogue as a focal point of Jewish communities and the main institution through which the study and dissemination of the divine law was carried on was one of the most distinctive important religious achievements of the Jews of late antiquity. The great majority of synagogue remains throughout the diaspora date from the late Roman and Byzantine periods. In the diaspora, fine structures have been uncovered at Ostia, Sardis, and Dera Europis. In their final phases, the synagogue at Dera belong to the mid third century AD and those at Ostia and Sardis was erected in the fourth century or later. In this map, the location of the remains of the synagogue of Dera Europis. The town of Dera Europis, site of this discovery of capital importance in the history of Jewish art was founded on the west bank of the Euphrates rivers by the Seleucids. The Parthians conquered it in about 150 BCE. The city, a prosperous international commercial center as long as the West and the Persianized Orient entertained peaceful relations, was occupied by the Roman legions in 163 and absorbed into the Syrian lines. In 227, with the advent of the Sassanian rulers, redoubtable enemies of Rome, 
This advanced post of the empire endured several assaults, finally succumbing in 256. During the final siege, the inhabitants of Dura, cut off from the outside help, sought to strengthen their walls with sand embankments. Roofs of houses rising above the ramparts were leveled off and the debris was used for the fortification. But these efforts were in vain. The Persians took the city through passages hollowed out under the walls. Dura disappeared from history. But the labors of its last defenders allowed the preservation of the Roman East's largest known ensemble of mural paintings buried under the sand for 17 centuries. But this is an artistic reconstruction of the Dera Europus Synagogue. This is how it might have appeared to the average citizen of the city of Dera Europus 2,000 years ago. Here we are looking at another artistic rendering of the Dera Europus Synagogue from 2,000 years ago. Here, we have a picture of the interior of the synagogue. And another view of the interior of the synagogue. At this point, I want to get the thoughts and impressions from an historian on his views of the Dera Europa Synagogue. I'm going to use as reference material the Black Presence in the Lands of the Bible by author Dodd Malik Watts. Dera Europis. One day in 1920 AD, a British soldier in Syria stumbled across the lost site of a Greek fortress, now called Dera Europis. Between 1920 and 1937, extensive archaeological research was conducted at Dera site which uncovered a Hebrew synagogue, Christian chapel, and temple of Mithra, untouched since 256 AD, when it fell to the invading army of Persia. The Hebrew synagogue was particularly unusual because it contained a number of life-size paintings on the walls. These included scenes of Moses parting the sea, the return of the ark, the anointment of David, as well as images of many other biblical events. Here was a unique opportunity to witness how Jews of that time depicted themselves with their own hands. For the most part, they portrayed themselves as people of color, ranging from light complexions to black and skin color. In some cases, they had thick lips and flat noses as well. This discovery is even more significant, considering that this time period, 3rd century AD, followed nearly 400 years of Jewish racial intermixing into Greek culture. Paintings on the west wall of the Jewish synagogue 
Dera Europus Syria, 256 AD, courtesy Yale University. The frescoes in the Dera Europus Synagogue and the floor mosaics of other synagogues in Israel and the diaspora testify to the fact that rich figurative art tradition of the biblical period continued into the Hellenistic period and played a central role in Jewish life. Quite when the institution of the synagogue first began is uncertain. Both the Babylonian exile after 587 BC and the period following the reaffirmation of the covenant by the Jews led by Ezra in the 5th century BC. Judah provides suitable context for the inauguration of a regular method for reminding Jews of their law. But it is only in the 3rd century BC that the earliest papyri from Egypt refer to the existence of a synagogue. By the 1st century AD, however, many sources assume that synagogues have become widespread, both in Palestine and in the diaspora. Gabriel S. Rajna, Ancient Jewish Art. The Frescoes of Dera Europis. The Israelites Exodus from Egypt under the leadership of Moses. Moses saved from the Nile by Pharaoh's daughter. Aaron in the garb of the high priest. Five other figures represent Aaron's sons and the Levitical clans. Israelites camp in the desert. Abraham receiving the promise. The calling of Moses, the burning bush. The ark at the battle of Eben Hazor. The Battle of Eben Hazor. The Ark Among the Philistines. The Procession of the Ark. The Anointing of David. Elijah Restores the widow's child. Elijah visits the widow. The sacrifice of Elijah. Ezekiel's vision. Solomon's temple. Solomon, the judgment. Ezra, reading the law. The triumph of Mordecai, Purim festival. The Israelites, the southern kingdom of Judah. Six hundred miles through swamp and cane break to fight for freedom, 1863. This image of a slave boy from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, depicts the most despicable conditions of slavery on the most innocent of humanity, children. The child's gaunt 
stature, and tattered clothing present up front the effects of slavery on humans. But what really haunts this photo is the blink cold look in the boy's eyes. The abolitionists use this dark picture to communicate ideas of anti-slavery and to pull feelings of sympathy and horror from the public. What is very interesting about this particular runaway slave boy is that his physical appearance seemed to match the physical appearance of a painting of a young man, a boy, just around his age, from the land of Canaan, from the book, The Black Presence and Biblical Lands. And what any biblical scholar or any Bible dictionary will tell you is that the land of Canaan is also known as the land of Israel. The image of a slave boy from Baton Rouge, Louisiana clearly resembles the paintings of the physical types on the frescoes of the Dara Europis Synagogue. In the Dera Europus frescoes, we can clearly see and understand why the first century Roman historian Tatidus, concerning the origin of the Jews, made this statement. Many again say that they were a race of Ethiopian origin. The Dera Europus fresco was made during a period of the Greco-Roman Empire when there were only three tribes left in the land of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But what many people might not know is that the Greek historians that preceded the Romans considered that there were a portion of the Israelites known as Indians. So now we're going to go into a little history of the northern tribes of Israel and why the Greeks labeled these tribes as Indians. <laughs> 